Hey there folks, welcome back to another scav case video. This time our first moonshine entry. We'll be cracking open 50 moonshine cases from the current dot 14 wipe. As always, most folks are probably just looking for the openings and loot. So we'll be jumping right into that right away. Timestamps are below, however, if you want to skip around the different chapters. If you're interested in more of a breakdown of the numbers and how I got them, as well as additional information on using the scav case and moonshine and loot and all that mumbo jumbo, watch through the whole thing. Either way you do it, I love you. Thank you for watching. Let's jump right into it. No way, what? Hold on a minute, what?
That's it for the openings. If you're clicking off the video now, thank you for watching, but I encourage all to stick around for the analytical part of the video. I do a lot of yapping, but it's good fun. I'm going to change up the order of things a bit too, so as always, there's timestamps below for folks to skip around with. Before we begin, I want to put out a huge, huge thank you to everyone for the support in the last Intel video. 2.6 thousand views and 30 comments probably doesn't seem like a lot to most people, but for a channel of my size, it's a big response to a video. So I just want to say I'm, I'm very grateful for all the love. I love seeing all the comments telling me what you got from your cases or how you like to use a scav, scav case module. Excuse me. I also love and appreciate all the comments I got giving feedback and constructive criticism, especially because all of it was just that constructive. Uh, I've recorded this bit like 10 times and I can't not ramble on the feedback for like 30 minutes and I don't want the video to be that long so I'm going to try to address the feedback quickly when it's relevant to the normal cadence of the video and then just include it in future iterations. I just wanted to say all this again to convey how grateful I am for the input and support though. I don't, I don't want to pass up over what any of you guys said so it will be in the video if you watch through. Um, so let's get started. We'll be kicking things off with how I obtain the values. When I open a case, I have a spreadsheet in which I write down each item that I got from it and then I go to a handy website called TarkovMarket.com. On this website, we can find a wealth of information about the flea market and item pricing. And here I look at the items I got and record the seven day average price, add them all up, and that's how I get the total value of the case. Now, why do I do the seven day average? It might be more direct to just sell the items outright as soon as I get them. However, uh, like a lot of people that are going to be doing this in real time and not for the sake of a video or in bulk like I have done here, I keep a lot of the things to use myself or to sell at a later time when I know the price might go up. So for the sake of the video, I think it's more realistic just to take that seven day average of the time that I got it and use that. And we'll address some of that later in the disclaimer section because prices can change wildly so again you can't really extrapolate any kind of meaningful comparison out of this it's just fun to look at i also want to say that this is not an ad i'm not sponsored of course by a tarkov market but if you like looking at data for tarkov and seeing trends this is a great website to use they have a pro version that you can support them with for five dollars a month that gets you access to a whole bunch of stuff but most notably for me, we can look at long-term data and see how items fluctuate over a wipe or two. This can be important to keep in mind for these videos because, for example, it's currently August, but these openings and prices are from late February, early March. Armor has gone through like a million updates this wipe. So some gear in this video is wildly cheaper. You might see an MMAC in my, in my clip and think that that's worth more than the price of the entire case that you put up. But back then it was like... 10k because no one liked to run them early wipe um and now they're like 90k so things can change and this website can let you see how that has evolved additionally as you might know guns and bits of gear certain guns and bits of gear are banned from sale in the flea market uh for these items i always just take their highest sell vendor value for guns that's mechanic for armor that's ragman and use that value price and here are all those values now um, so you can't really get a seven day average for that. So I just take the sell to vendor value and use that. Now, one of the bits of feedback was that the seven day average isn't a good value to use because I'm not accounting for the flea commission fee that you have when you sell an item on the flea market. That's fair and valid. Um, and also again, shout out to Tarkov market because you can calculate fee costs there as well. For the sake of the videos, I, I don't dig into that kind of stuff or typically I have in the past because that fee is going to be different day to day, person to person. I just feel like for presenting number, all the numbers I get presented in a video like this, it's just easier to look at net value. Um, you know, anybody that plays the game knows that there is a fee and that's going to be calculated into things. Um, so I think what this all boils down to me needing to do is just to be a bit more informative of that and say like these are the values that's going to be a bit lower because of the fee i'm not going to calculate that all out and show this is net this is gross this is the individual fee for each individual item i just i don't think that's worth anybody's time but it is a valid thing to bring up uh especially when you're looking at real life economics now for disclaimers and this is where a lot of that feedback will be addressed and probably sit in future iterations of this video in the series 
Firstly, I like to bring up what I call market value versus potential value. Uh, I'm not into economics or knowledgeable in the field at all, so please forgive my terminology. Uh, I'm no expert, nor do I claim to be one or try to be one. I say this in all my prior videos, we're essentially talking about gambling inside of a video game here, so you really can't glean any meaningful information off of these comparisons, especially from a high level economic standpoint. It's just fun to spin the wheel and see what loot we get you know monkey brain type stuff and then vaguely compare what we get from them wipe to wipe i don't ever mean to try and convey this as being anything more than that um but again market value versus potential value basically this is the idea that i have that looking at these net values for items can be a bit deceptive because of their potential applications in game this is especially the case for keys, which don't show up in Moonshine, but also for guns and gear, which does show up in Moonshine. So, for example, an SR-25 sells the mechanic for 58k, but you could take it into a raid where you otherwise might have had a weaker gun or one you aren't as comfortable using. And then you can use this more powerful gun to extract more wealth that you would not have otherwise gotten. And that is much more than 58k that you would have got for selling the gun. This is much more understandable with keys, an example being a marked key that's 2 million on the flea, but you use it 10 times in raid and make 8 million, giving you 6 million more than you would have had. This is of course also deceptive in and of itself as it all is a gamble, and that's why I don't try to calculate these potential values based off this idea, I just like to bring it up and, and, and mention it. It was a part of someone's feedback that this idea isn't useful or valid, which may be true, especially in a real world economic comparison scenario, but I still think it has merit here. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but again, we're talking about gambling in a video game, so I, I feel like it's still valid. Additionally, they said it could be a good call out that there is uh, an unquantifiable value to account for with the fact that scav case loot is found in raid which means you can use it for quest turn-ins. I think I've made mention of this off the cuff about like stims from the Intel video for samples, which is 100% valid and something I'll try to double down on in this section in the future. The second big uh, takeaway from feedback that I want to address is someone called out that I have failed in the past to include the upfront cost of building the scav case module. This is a fair thing, and some other creators like Airwing mention this when they talk about uh, the potential value and profit to be made from modules in the hideout uh, besides the scav case. I've honestly just not remembered to make a disclaimer about this in the past. It's 100% valid. Um, however, I don't think I'm going to bother calculating it into the cost of my totals and comparison data, partly because that would invalidate the past data we've already done videos on, but also because I just think it's a needless complication. Everybody that is going to build the scav case is going to build it regardless of the cost. And we're not comparing that value in anything really. So like if I was going to make a video that say, is the scav case worth it across the entirety of the white and include the 50 Intel and include the 50 moonshine and include all the extra shit that I don't record with this throughout the entirety of the white, then I think that value might make more sense to include. But since I'm looking at an isolated pocket of 50 moonshines, I don't think it really matters that much because it lacks the context of using it besides these 50 moonshines. But I will make mention of it here in the future and going forward because it is valid if somebody watches this and goes, I just want to also do 50 Intel or 50 Moonshine and see what I get. Cause then it would be important for them to account for the fact that they have to pay 2 million or whatever upfront. And the value of course will be different for everybody depending on the time of the wipe they buy the items to build the scav case. So again, that's yet another complication. Then lastly, a few of the comments address opportunity costs. This comes up because of the points I just made, mostly that keys, guns, and gears, potential value doesn't really matter because I could just sell the Intel or Moonshine in the first place instead of putting it through the scav case and then use that money that I made from selling them to buy the keys and gears and guns and whatnot. Additionally, I mentioned that I get quote unquote free Intel or free Moonshine because I find them in raid and then I don't include that in the input costs in the past. These comments point out that this ignores opportunity cost because again, I could sell these Intels and Moonshines minus the commission, then I have to account for that potential value. Uh, I personally don't 
feel like a lot of this falls inside the purview of this video because in these scenarios i'm 100 not going to do any of that i'm not going to sell the intel or the moonshine i will always use it to see what i get from the gamble so it doesn't really matter what value i could have gotten out of them i'm only looking at what i get out of the case and then also making mention of how much i spent to get these items in the first place I understand the points of this feedback and I agree that they might be worth mentioning from an economic standpoint, but I guess that I feel like the concepts are just a bit too in the weeds for what I want to do with these videos. And I can kind of mitigate that going forward by using clearer language. That mainly being that I need to stop calling things profit and loss. At the end of the day, I'm just comparing these super rough values. Um, odds are, unless you're super lucky, you're not going to get profit off of these and I need to call it input and output. So I shouldn't frame it in a way that, that says I'm definitely making money because I get that that is misleading. So going forward, I'll just try to include these bits of extra information in the disclaimer section. And then throughout the video, I'll be more concise in saying that I'm dealing with net values that have a million different caveats that will greatly affect how much value has been pulled in or out of these totals. As always, uh, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm way off here. Again, I'm not an expert, so please keep the feedback coming let me know if i'm just way off base here i just think at the end of the day like i said at the beginning of this section we're talking about essentially what is gambling inside of a video game so i don't think it's really worth getting into all the different complications you can get because there's just so many and with all that out of the way let's get into the fun bits starting with totals and averages we're going to be flinging a lot of numbers out this is obviously going to be further complicated in this video by the fact that unlike Intel, moonshine costs can be brought down potentially, potentially, by making it yourself, using the water module and the booze collector module, and then water filters, super water, and sugar within those. So to help cover what we were just talking about, I'm going to show how I ended up cost-wise with my own personal moonshine that was crafted, and then throughout the entire time I did this, I also kept the daily price changes of raw moonshine on the flea and averaged it out. So you can also look at the cost if you had just bought the 50 moonshine yourself during the same time frame that I was doing this. And much like building the scav case, I'm not going to be including the cost of building the water or booze module. So keep that in mind. So, all in all, we used 50 bottles of moonshine. Personally, I did not buy a single one. I found or crafted all of mine. Throughout this process, I used 32 found and raid sugars of the total 100 needed, and enough found and raid water filters to make 29 of the 50 total super waters needed. With all of that out of the way, I was left with needing to buy 21 super waters worth of filters, totaling 1,719,000 rubles and 68 sugars totaling 4,572,000 rubles, putting my total input cost personally at 6,291,000 rubles. Now, throughout this whole process, the average price of moonshine on the flea market was 289,950 rubles per bottle. So if I had bought all 50 directly, my input cost would have been 14 million 497,500 rubles instead. Because I crafted my moonshine, my moonshine average cost was 125,820 per instead of that 289,950. Average sugar cost was 67,235 per and average filter cost was 85k per. Now looking at returns, if we add up all the values of the cases we saw opened at the start of the video, we get a return value of 12,874,278 rubles. If we take that number and subtract our personal input cost of 6,291,000 rubles, we get a positive output of 6,583,278 rubles, which sounds pretty awesome. On the flip side, if we take that return value and instead subtract the flea value moonshine input cost, we get a negative output of minus 1,623,222 rubles, which does not sound pretty awesome. To reiterate from the disclaimers, I will be using my own personal data for the comparisons in future videos, but I wanted to include the raw value of the moonshines to help uh, show the differences based on the feedback. 
Now in the last video I said I was getting rid of the notable cases section, but because we can't do a comparison section yet, seeing as this is the first moonshine video, I thought I'd re-include it at least just this once, maybe I'll bring it back going forward, I don't know yet. Because we did get some cool cases, and I can talk more on the quest turn-in feedback that someone left. Uh, so on that, cases 6, 10, 12, 13, 21, and 46, we got uh, the coveted tank battery. Or as it's actually named the 6-10-140-M military battery. This is a notable drop A because I might have gotten very lucky with getting 6, which is a big value since they're worth a nice chunk of change. Uh, but also 2 because one found in raid 1 is needed for the quest regulated materials. Uh, this can trip up new players and noobs such as myself because they are rarely found on reserve which is a map I don't particularly love. I don't think noobs like it either. And I think recently they were added to lighthouse so maybe they're not so bad now. I don't know. I haven't played this wipe a whole lot. Uh, but this made them difficult to find and then if you did find them they're extremely heavy and if you're low strength They're very difficult to extract and it's a headache and an anxiety inducing trip um, So the moonshine scav case lets you semi easily get around that entirely uh, and By not having to find one in the game and well, I got six of them uh, Case 46 is fun because uh, we got a tank battery as mentioned before an Intel folder Which was worth a whole lot and a vertex as it stood in March when I got this, we were already looking pretty nice at a rough value of 790,000 rubles. But here's a great note on why the time period in which you do anything in Tarkov is important. At the time that I got this, vertexes were only 130-ish K, but right now, because of uh, maybe the recent event that just ended, I don't, I don't know why, they're over a million each. And a few days ago, they spiked crazily up to 4 million, 6 million, even 10 million for a day or some point during that day. So whoever pulled a vertex from a scav case in the last few days could have paid the raw value, input value for this entire video with just one case. You know, that's the beauty of gambling, right? Then lastly, I want to look at case 42 where I got the uh, <clears throat> Silicon Optoelectronic Integrated Circuits textbook. This was a cool item to get, uh, and its value is kind of hard to determine as well. As we saw earlier, it vendors for 315k, but I could easily see this being perceived as being worth way more than that. Uh, again, I'm a noob. I don't know a whole lot about this item because uh, I haven't interacted with Lightkeeper shit yet. But I know traditionally it is a reward from a Lightkeeper quest somewhere. I don't know how deep in his line, but somewhere in there. Uh, the wiki also lists it as being in a few loot pools like jackets and safe. I've never seen a drop personally, uh, nor have I ever heard of someone getting it that way. So if you have, let me know. Um, but anyway, this is a tool component needed to craft very valuable things like lead X's, root by R's, the microcontroller boards for Lightkeep requests. And many of these also require you to complete certain quests to craft plus the textbook. So this was a cool rare drop. I, I, I didn't even know this was in the pool, but... Yeah, pretty cool. No way, what? Hold on a minute, what? And that about wraps up this video. With that, we are all caught up on the scab case videos. Dot 14 is done and dusted at last. We're at the uh the finish line right here, barely getting this done before wipe, because that's probably coming real soon. Uh I will be getting around to doing an Intel and Moonshine video for this upcoming wipe at some point. I thought about doing videos for 95k, uh, the 95k scav case option as well, but we'll see. This wipe, it's probably going to be pretty short. I imagine we'll get another one around Christmas like we usually do, so I might not until next year, but let me know if that's something you'd like to see as well. I'd like to really thank everyone once again for their support and feedback on that last video. Uh, as I kind of rambled about your feedback throughout this video, looking back, it feels like I might have sounded like I'm pushing back against it. And being stubborn on some things i hope it doesn't come off that way I, I genuinely appreciate it and thought over a lot of it i value everyone's opinions and ideas so i never want to come off as sounding dismissive of any of it i think ultimately these videos are supposed to be simple fun and i don't want to overcomplicate them i'm also probably not smart enough to dive into economic terms and principles anyway so it's probably best that i, I don't bother <laughs> trying to sound smarter than i am uh but anyway Thank you all again for watching. Please like the video, 
leave a comment subscribe you hear it all the time everywhere every video but all that stuff really does help it matters and it spreads the video around it helps me uh helps me make more videos uh i love you please have a good day have a good weekend peace